Hello everyone, my name is Scalty, and today I'm bringing you a guide on creating 16 rotors per minute at 100% efficiency. I hope you enjoy. Alright, so before we get this build started, a few things to note. Off to the right, you can see a list of the various machines that we're going to need to create to get this factory up and running. We're going to need 6 smelters, 23 constructors, and 4 assemblers. On top of that, the power draw for this factory is going to be 182.8 megawatts, and that's because we're going to be underclocking a couple of these constructors. And also, you're going to need plus or minus 1, 2, 3 MK1 miners. At the very least, for the input, you're going to need 180 iron ore. So be it from a pure node, normal node, several impure nodes, etc. You just want to make sure you have 180 iron ore coming into the system, which will also add a little bit to that power draw. So, the way I have it set up here for our presentational purposes is I have a MK2 miner on a pure iron node with an MK3 belt line. Obviously, at the point in which this factory is going to be relevant, you're not going to have access to those things, or at least not likely have access to those things. And so the way I have this system set up here is I have 240 iron ore coming out and I'm feeding it onto three MK1 belt lines and that's going to limit our input to 180 because of 60, 120, and then 180. And as you can see here, I have these being fed underneath our main floor and this is to keep our navigational walk space nice and clean. And in terms of our space that we're going to need, we're going to need a at least 5x3 space, and that is these white and black foundations here in the middle. And then I also like to include an additional border foundation, so that way we can build up some walls on the outside and make this factory its own freestanding building. So, to get started, what we're going to want to do is take out these two foundations here. And this will be our input. And so let's go ahead and get some lifts that are in the center of this space here, where the white foundations are located. And then what we're going to do to hide away all of our belt work down here in the middle is place walls along this edge here. And these black foundations are where we are going to be having our smelters, but up one 8x4 foundation height. So to get the belt work to that, we're going to go ahead and build out three wall conveyor walls on the long edge. Do the same thing on this side. And then everything else can be its a normal wall. and just build over top like that. And then we'll go ahead and put in our 8x1 foundation to hide that away. And so bringing in 180 or we have three different lines. It's a pretty easy uh, split here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this middle line and run it to the far two walls. And then we're going to go ahead and take this left line facing this way, left line, bring it over and split it here, and then the right line we will split here. So that way each of these outputs at this point will receive 30 iron ore per minute. And if you want to go for that perfect 90 degree sexiness, by all means feel free, but this is all going to be hidden away, so it's just for your peace of mind at that point. So pretty simple uh, distribution of inputs. And so with that being done, we're going to go ahead and enclose all of this with some 8x1 foundations. And now we have our base structure. Next up is placing our smelters. And when placing these above the wall, the walls here, you want to make sure that we're hanging the smelter off by one meter. So here you can see this right edge where the input of the smelter is is right just not quite over it. You want to make sure that it's hanging over by one step just like this. So that way 
when we place our lifts, they will snap directly to the walls below with no additional belt work necessary. So let's go ahead and get the rest of these in place. Okay, just like that. Alright, when it comes for the outputs to be created for our smelters, if you've seen my reinforced iron plate factory guide, I like to do a little bit of load balancing from the outputs of these smelters, if possible. And so with the iron rotors, we can actually do just that. So when it comes to the assemblers, the inputs are going to be 80 iron rods per minute and 400 iron screws per minute to give us our 16 rotors. So working that backward, the 80 iron rods means that we need 80 iron ingots. And then for the 400 screws, we're going to need eight, I'm sorry, 100 iron rods. And that means we're going to need 100 iron ingots. So we need to take the 180 iron ingots being produced here and separate it into one line of 100 and one line of 80. And that's pretty simple in terms of the math because we have three smelters, a pair of three smelters. So we have 90 from one pair, 90 from the other for 180. So what we need to do is create a line of 100. So 90 plus 10 from this side in one direction. And that leaves 90 minus the 10 of 80 going off in the other direction. So we need to get a little creative with the belt work. And so what we're going to want to do is take mergers first. And this will be our 100 line coming out. So we're going to take three mergers, place one in front of each smelter off in one direction. And then where that output is located, we're going to take a splitter on the opposite side smelter and have that facing straight out in this direction. And then right next to that, working our way inward, we're going to take a merger and lead that off in the opposite direction this way. Again, take another merger in front of each smelter here. And then what we're going to end up doing, because we have 30 coming out from this smelter into this splitter, we have the opportunity to create three different lines of 10 items per minute. So we're going to take a belt and connect it to this merger here. We'll go ahead and merge these up to, or connect these up. So that way this might be a little bit easier to understand. Make sure we have an MK2 belt coming off of this direction here. And when we have the outputs, real quick, when we have the outputs to go up to a next floor, make sure you bring your belt line right to the edge of the short side foundations. All right, so to get back to how we're splitting all this up. So we have essentially at this point 30 coming in on this belt here because we have no additional outputs. So if we connect this splitter to this merger. We're now breaking out 30 into two lines of 15. However, if we take a lift and put it here, and then on this merger in between the smelters, and put a lift there, and then we connect this up. For this splitter here, we now have one line of 10 going in this direction, one line of 10 going in this direction, and one line of 10 going in that direction. So we now have the 10 that we need from these three splitters, I'm sorry, smelters, coming off in this direction, merging with our 90, and this gives us our belt of 100. And then we have the 10 coming off in this direction, looping back into the system, giving us our 80 iron ingots off in this direction. So I hope that makes sense. And uh, if you need to give us a rewatch, by all means, feel free to do so. But in the end, it will work out where we have 80 iron ingots going in this direction and 100 going in that direction. So we should make sure everything is all connected up here. Okay, oh, there we go. All right, and now we're time to get ready for our second floor. So for that, we're going to take an 8x4 foundation and build that up four times to get vertical clearance over our smelters. And then we're going to start our first sandwich layer. And by that, what I mean is to take an 8x1 foundation next to the 8x4 that we built on the very top, and then build it down three more times. And this gives us four 8x1 foundations creating the height of an 8x4. So we can go ahead and delete these two in the middle, 
and also the 8x4 foundations that we built over here. And now you can kind of see we have the top part and bottom part of our sandwich. So what we're going to want to do is build this out to match the area below, which is this 5x3 space. So let's go ahead and get this built. And you want to make sure that you build both the top and bottom part of this sandwich layer because when it comes to placing a smelter in the middle, if you have a splitter or a merger, <laughs> so I'm sorry, not a smelter in the middle, but when you place a splitter or a merger uh, down on this bottom part, if this is constructed before the top part, you will not be able to build a foundation because it'll give you a clearance error. So we have our 100 iron ingots coming up this way and we have our 80 going off in this direction and we're going to focus on these 80 first to get our 80 iron rods created. So for that we're going to need a total of six constructors being made and we're going to have an, one of them being underclocked. So with them being six let's just go for some symmetry and we're going to have these three foundations on the long edge in the middle be where our constructors are going to be located. But before we build that, we want to make sure that we get our walls started up. Because it'll just make things a little easier based on how the constructors are going to be placed. So on this one foundation on the edge, we can just do a regular wall, and then we'll do three wall conveyors in the middle, a normal one. And then because we have no input coming up from this side, this short end can just be three regular walls. And then back to normal wall, three wall conveyors, and then a normal wall. And then where we have our iron ingots coming up, you want to go ahead and do a wall conveyor, a regular wall next to it, and we'll leave this one open for the moment so that way we can do our belt work. But before we start doing that, let's go ahead and get our constructors in place. So similar with the smelters below, you're going to want the constructors hanging off by one step. and then get our lifts in place. Voila! Okay, so with having one of these constructors being underclocked, load balancing is going to get a little finicky going from one line to, you know, five and uh, change, essentially. So what we're going to end up doing is just having this be an overflow system. And so for that, you just want to take in between each pair of constructors, just place a splitter in the middle here, in line with our upcoming input of iron ingots. And then just go ahead and connect these with some MK1 belts. And then I would suggest, it's not going to make too much of a difference, but placing some MK2 belts in the middle here, just like this. And before we actually get that belt connected, let's go ahead and bring up, using an MK2 lift, our iron ingots. Just like that. So, at the start, it won't be 100% efficient, but over time, everything will ramp up, and you'll be having a perfect 100% output. Go ahead and get that closed up, just like that. Okay, so we're going to need to underclock one of these constructors because we only have the 80 iron ingots coming up and based on the iron rod recipe each one of these constructors takes in 15 per minute and outputs 15 iron rods per minute so each pair gives us a total of 30 60 and then 90 but we only have the input for 80 to be produced technically if you want you can just leave everything as is but in terms of saving a little bit of power uh, you can go ahead and actually just take one of these constructors and underclock it to produce five items per minute. So that way we have 30, 60, one at 100% uh, to give us 75, and then one at 33% giving us an additional five to create a total of 80 iron rods per minute. And then this can be simply just put onto one singular line, and you want the output going in the direction of where the input is. 
So we have the input of the iron ingots from below on this side. You want to have the output going off in the same direction. Just like that. Now for the second floor, we're going to go and take 8x4 foundations again. We only need to build it up three times to get proper clearance over the constructors. And then go ahead and again take our 8x1 foundations to create our sandwich layer. The exact same way we did it below. And then for the input coming up, which will be the 100 iron ingots from here, we're going to produce or create seven constructors this time around because we're going to need 100 iron rods. So what you can go ahead and do is we'll have these three foundations here be for constructors and then these four over here be for constructors. So when it comes to getting our walls in place, we'll do four walls, wall conveyors on this side normal wall over here. Come over to here real quick. We'll do three on this side. And similar to below, because we have no input coming up from below here, these could just be normal walls. Single wall conveyor here, and then leaving us a gap to go in and do bell work. So next up is getting the constructors in place. Again, hanging them over by one step. Okay, let me go ahead and just for continuity purposes, go under our constructors here to that we still need at this point 10 constructors to be built. Let's go ahead and get these lifts in place. Get this connected before I forget. And then same thing with the floor below. We're just going to go ahead and do an array system. So we don't need one on this edge because we only have the singular constructor. So on these six, we'll go ahead and do splitters. And then on this long one, just go ahead and connect it up like so. As you can see, how I'm building this, I'm building my way out. So this is where we came in. I'm building my way out because if you're trying to walk or fly around in here, you won't be able to get vertical clearance uh, given the height of your character to be able to just step over this neatly. You'd have to, you know, either like run and slide underneath the belts or um, jump and crouch to get over uh, this spot here, which is just a little, a little annoying. So it's always useful to just, you know, build your way out. So that way you don't have to worry about any of that. Go ahead and close that up. And then for this seventh constructor down here, because we need 100, so we have 30, 60, 90. So we just need this seventh one to give us 10 iron rods per minute. And if you don't have underclocking, or I'm sorry, if you don't have overclocking unlocked yet, you don't truly need it overall based on how the overflow system works. As long as you have the input you're going to get the output. Uh, this is just to save a little bit on power consumption. Which I guess technically if it's not running because it's just not getting the feed, it's not using the power anyway. But uh, So similar with below, we can just go ahead and get all of this connected up into one singular system going back towards the input, like so. bringing it all the way to the edge. And we're now ready to 
work on our next floor. So let's go ahead one more time, build up three 8x4 foundations, get the sandwich layer in place. So this is where we're going to be producing all of our screws, and we're going to need 10 constructors in total. So we have five on each long edge, so that's clearly where our constructors will be going. Let's go ahead and get our walls in place, similar to the prior floors. Oh, and I forgot. To, so this is an example of why it's always beneficial to get your walls in place first, because I can't simply just place one on top because of the clearance issue here. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, get a little creative with it and just bring this over. Oh, sorry, bring this one over. Build a wall like so. And then delete all of this. So you can see it's a little bit of an extra process based on uh, not building your walls first. So we got this gap to do our belt work in the middle. And again, just going to do an array system or an overflow system. Just like that. We'll have to also go ahead and Close the gap here on the far side. Unfortunately, based on having the lifts in place first, it's going to require us to uh, redo the belt for it, unfortunately. So yeah, it's always better to get your walls in place first. Make things makes things a lot easier. Okay, so for the outputs of these screws, we have a total of 10 constructors producing our screws, which is an output of 40 screws per minute. So we have a total of 400 here, but we have very likely only at our disposal at the moment MK2 belt lines. So what we're going to do to keep things not get, to keep things from getting bottlenecked is we're going to take these two middle constructors and place splitters leading out from these like so and then we're going to group essentially at this point two and one half of the constructors together for our output which is going to be 40 80 and then half of 40 for 20 so that gives us 100 in this direction 100 here 100 here and 100 here so the rest of these constructors just require mergers in front of them. And then get this all belted up. You just need, at this point, MK2 belts on the uh, this short little output segment. Since we have uh, 20 from here, 40 from here, so we can do 60 on this belt here. Okay, our build's almost done. Let me make sure that I got all of these real quick. Okay, we're good. So to build up from here, what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and take an 8x4 foundation and build it off to the side. And then one, two, three. And you guessed it, just like below, another sandwich layer. And then for here, Based on the, the space that we have available, what we're going to actually end up doing this time around is we're going to place our assemblers on the short corner, with the input being from the short side. 
and again hanging over by one step. And then we'll go ahead and get the walls sorted out. So for here, we have our two uh, screws coming up. Two lines of screws coming up. Oh, so yeah, once again, make sure you <laughs> get the walls done first. So because we have the assemblers on this short side here, what we're going to want to do is keep building this wall conveyor, uh, two wall conveyor out to the sides. And then on this side over here, if we haven't forgotten by now, we do have our iron rods coming up from our second floor to match with the uh, iron screws coming up from the third floor. So we're going to want to go ahead and build a uh, wall with three conveyor inputs. And then again, two inputs on the sides here. And these can all just be normal walls on the long edge. So now we can get these assemblers in place again. And then for the lifts, it's not just going to be the MK1 lifts all around. So the way we're going to have this belt work uh, being done is we have the screws coming up from these two here which will be these two inputs here so let me go ahead and head to the inside real quick so if each of these are going to be 100 items per minute we need to maintain that speed all the way around and so the easiest way to kind of belt this up is to do it just like this I'm not going to finalize this because we want to get our lifts in place first but you can kind of see how we're going to be doing our screws coming up and that'll be the same thing on this side here. So the in inside uh, output from the sandwich layer is going to be where we're going to put our MK2 lifts. And then the exterior will be our MK1. If you want to use MK2 throughout the entire system, by all means, feel free. So we have that sorted out. We'll bring these up now. Okay, and to do the bell work, so we have our iron rods coming up. We have a total of 80 from below. So just, all we're going to do is just go ahead and split this here in the middle. And then for the outside facing portion is where we're going to have these rods going. So just make sure we get this splitter lined up. Same thing on the other side. And then run the belts. And so here's... <coughs> where you don't want to build like this because essentially we're not building our way out. So I'm going to hold off on doing this one until the very end. Get this one connected. And we're going to go ahead and get our screws set up like that. Screws over here. This goes to there. Make sure we have everything all connected. We're good to go. Go ahead and get this one in place. And just like that. So, essentially that's build complete. The outputs for our rotors can be however you see fit. I typically will run them off uh, the edge here and then bring them back down to the ground. So essentially though, we have four rotors per minute coming out of each of these assemblers and you can have those go in whichever way you so choose. So all that's remaining at this point is to get some power attached to all of these machines and also go ahead and get some walls built. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and take care of.
that completes our build. I hope you guys found a lot of value in this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see more content in the future, be sure to subscribe. And if you have anything specific you want to see, be sure to leave a comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.